So earlier this week, I was working on a story where we were talking about the Omicron effects on New York City, a larger story. I was doing one little tiny part in it. They just asked me to go to LaGuardia and see if there were any you know, delays or any problems that people were experiencing because of the Omicron surge. One thing that I noticed immediately when I got there though, was the lines were huge. There were four times as many people there as I had ever seen in that terminal. I knew something had changed, something was different. So I immediately started looking around and for people to talk to. And those people are, that you want to talk to are not the people on the lines who are standing up on the lines because you know they're focused on other things. People who are sitting on the floor with their bags all around them, they have time to talk. They're obviously sitting there for a long time. I started with them. I found out that they were taking turns waiting on a line to get COVID tests so they could move on, take the next flight. Some of these people that I spoke to had been waylaid for a couple of days. They had missed several flights in a row and they were kind of stuck. I thought, okay, well, there's your answer. But then I got a little curious because the, these people, they were talking about waiting on a line and that they were having to take shifts with each other because it was so cold that you couldn't stand out there for as long as it took. Where is this? I, I wanted to see it. So I, I went down, it was in the parking structure out on the ground floor outside Terminal B. The woman who told me where it was and, and kind of walked me down there, she was like, oh, well, I'm going to go relieve my daughter right now anyway. She had a 15 year old daughter waiting on this line outside. So I went with her downstairs and she was wearing just like a sweatshirt. <laughs> we went outside and I was immediately like freezing because it was like 31 degrees with seriously high winds. Here's this kid, a 15 year old little girl standing out in, the, in this line, like shaking going like this, like up and down. And the mother came out and like took the coats from her and put them on herself. And the 15 year old girl went back inside. And I started talking to people on this line. There were a bunch of crazy stories about people who had been waylaid and delayed for days and missed multiple flights and still haven't been able to get out. So they were doing, following all the rules, doing everything that they were supposed to be doing, but they weren't getting their results in time. Or the amount of time that they were having to wait on lines was a lot longer than they thought, so they were missing their flights. We have women and kids standing in the freezing cold. I honestly don't know how this system came to be at LaGuardia. You don't get a straight answer on that one. The straightest answer I got was that flyers who flew in, when they came into New York, the protocols that they had to meet were different than the protocols they had to meet to leave New York. It all came down to just trying to follow the rules that they were being told and things just not working out. I think where the major problem is they had one van in a parking lot doing the testing for thousands of people. If they had five or 10 of these vans doing this, it would have been a different story, obviously. Plus they also have different requirements for passengers going to different uh, countries. Every country has its own set of requirements for entry as far as COVID testing goes. So some of them needed PCR tests. Some of them, it didn't matter if they were uh, vaccinated or not vaccinated, they needed a PCR test. You know, there was a hundred different regulations that they were all trying to adhere to. So just the sheer complexity of what the folks at, at the airport were trying to deal with and the travelers themselves, there was no way that this was gonna be a simple problem simply solved.